welcome to the podcast. Today's guest is Jamie Probst. She seems to have done it all by starting starting from scratch. She loves to figure things out. She loves to try new things, problem solve, learn from others, and then teach others what she has learned. From selling items on Facebook to starting Facebook groups to connect like-minded people, then turning that into a coaching entrepreneurs and others to do the same. Jamie loves to learn, build systems, and analyze what works and what doesn't work, and then shares what she learns by bringing people together into a community online and in person. She has done it in different industries, from horses to cattle to entrepreneurial groups and even the fishing world. So welcome to the podcast, Jamie. Thank you, Peggy. Thanks so much for having me here. It's an honor to be on be on the show. <laughs> and I'm so happy you're here and we're just going to have this conversation. But you know what? I know I didn't even scratch the surface to all the ways that you have helped people. So can you start the conversation by sharing a little bit more about your who you are, your personal journey, or and how it has led you to where you are today? Sure. Um, so my name is Jamie Props. Very recently have become Jamie Props. So I'm still trying to say it because there's a lot of consonants, if you noticed. <laughs> uh, just, just recently got married. But uh, my journey started out, gosh, I've always been an entrepreneur. I was that kid that made keychains in first grade and sold them at recess for $1.50, got in trouble, couldn't do it anymore, but still tried to. Like that was me. I was the kid always trying to make a buck. Um, make a buck, but because doing something that somebody would pay you for mm -hmm. felt like there was an accomplishment behind it. Mm -hmm. And so whether it was walking dogs <laughs> or babysitting <laughs> horses or learning to train a horse, um, I've always been entrepreneurial since forever, uh, yeah. really. And it wasn't until I had a great job, great career in the animal science industry the AI genetics industry specifically for cattle. And um, I remember sitting at my computer screen and feeling insanely miserable and just thinking, like I had this massive to-do list and all I could do was sit there and stare. And I was thinking, is this it? Is this really it? Like I have a fantastic team. I have a fantastic job title. I have a fantastic salary and a career trajectory that was going the direction I wanted, which was up. Why am I miserable? What is wrong with me? And at that point, <laughs> well, okay. You know, a health scare has always taken things to the, to the next change. Yes. Uh, there was a health scare with my partner at the time. And that had us scrounging and looking at Craigslist ads, thinking, what else could we do? We found a fishing lodge in Alaska we could go work for in the summer. And so I asked my company at the time, hey, can we, could I do this? and take a sabbatical. And they said, no. And I said, okay, bye. <laughs> Love you guys. But I think there needs to be a big change here. So I quit my job, quit my full-time job, went and worked in Alaska at a fishing lodge and found a Tony Robbins course in between shifts. And that's where it all started. <laughs> this online education thing just kind of blew my mind. So that, that's really the beginning of my journey. And I started building community because it was what I wish I had. I wanted an accountability group that turned into a Facebook group. People wanted to know how to build a Facebook group. So I started teaching that, had a coaching program around that of building online community. Um, but my love has always been fishing, hence the Alaska journey. And so I made a fishing logo 14 years ago that I never used. Mm -hmm. And we teach people to fish. My company is anglersunlimited.co. You can find anglersunlimited.co. We teach people to saltwater fish out here in the Pacific Northwest, halibut, lingcod, salmon fishing, shrimping, crabbing. Uh, that's really our go-to. But it's it's like Peggy said, finding the system, learning the system, teaching the system. That's the common thread is, is I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> well, yeah. And, you know, I'm just, I'm intrigued because it seems that a lot of times you're just curious about something. I mean, one, you have this, you know, innate entrepreneurial, you know, drive within you. But that's also a, a curiosity drive. I mean, to see what's going to work, what can I, what can I do? 
how do you think that like that curiosity and then also that tenacity to keep going to try something else plays a part in in your success? I think the curiosity is a me thing, or maybe not. Maybe it's a entrepreneurial trait because I see that in you also. Mm -hmm. um, just wanting to learn more and explore the world and see what's possible. That curiosity, but not being willing to give up on the question. Like mm -hmm. I want to know, and then I'm going to find out back to your tenacity. Mm -hmm. I think that's what separates people from it's, it's being willing to go for it and make the mistakes and step in front of the camera and fail and say the wrong thing on a podcast, yes, <laughs> right? right. Start, start and suck at it. That's the okay. truth. Start and suck at it. And I think that's the gap between people that have success and don't. It's really whether you're willing to start. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never been afraid to start. That's not true. There's always fear in every start. Right, right. It's never, it's never big enough to stop. Mm -hmm. And is that something that you see in other people that is a differentiator between somebody actually kind of going towards their dreams? Because there is a lot of fears in starting something new, but it sounds like don't be afraid to start is kind of what I'm hearing from you. Tell me a little bit more. Okay. The clarity comes in the start. Yeah. Maybe that's. So, yeah. so I think what holds a lot of people back, especially in the entrepreneur world, is you see this possibility. Something is shown to you, right? That the Tony Robbins course showed yeah. me a possibility of what my life could be, that I didn't have to punch a clock nine to five, do what my boss told me, only take a vacation when I, when I was allowed to. And I kind of wondered, I'm nothing special. I'm just a regular Joe Glow, Jamie Joe. <laughs> uh, there's, you know, I'm not the smartest kid in the class. I'm just willing to work hard, mm -hmm. but I also don't want to break my back. And I think, I think seeing that it is possible through others' examples makes me wonder, could I do it? Mm -hmm. Could I build something? And that question didn't ever like leave my brain. And so it was either constantly wonder if this is going to be a thing or just do it. Mm -hmm. And just do it was the choice in the, just doing it, the clarity, not only of confidence in myself, like, holy crap, I can do this. Like, wow, someone paid me. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's I, I launched a website and it looks cool. Yes. Right. People right. are showing up to my thing and listening to what I say and asking me questions. What? <laughs> like why? <laughs> you know, every single thing has been a moment of like, holy crap, it's happening. And then those holy craps, it's happening. Oh, and then you hit your first 10K month. And then you build your first coaching program. And then you launch your first online course. And then you literally are teaching, well, I'm teaching people to saltwater fish, but to see somebody land their first salmon because of a, a program that I wished I had. So mm -hmm. I created it. Like, it's just so, so, so like satisfying to to see what was in your head come to life mm -hmm. and help somebody else, if that makes sense. And I'm not sure if that answered your question, but really, I think one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make is they don't start. They yeah. think, oh, I don't know the right thing. I'm not sure what my niche is. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. What if I can't do it? And all of those questions hold you back, Right. but you will never figure out if you're in the right niche, if you don't actually give it a go, you have to start to find the clarity, um, right. if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and in starting, you figure, start figuring things out because, you know, you listed like, oh, well, this turned into this and then this turned into that and that turned into that. Well, none of that would have built up none of those things. If you wouldn't have taken your first step, like nobody learns to walk the first time they venture out and nobody really says, no, stop trying to walk you know, when you have fallen 10 times. So what I heard you say was just like, you, you tried something, you just did it. You just started, you tried something because sometimes I think people are, are hung up on words. And so if you, if you start something, it's going to be, have to be like, you have to complete it to the end you have to fulfill it all the way, but really it's just try something. And then see where that goes. Learn something. 
then you learn something else. And then you just keep going and then look what you've built. Then you look backwards and wow, look at all this stuff that you've built, Jamie, but everybody does that. They just need to get over that first hurdle of starting. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It's definitely yeah. hard. It's it's work up here, right? In in our minds and and believing not even, I don't think I believed I could do it. I think, I think I, I wasn't willing to not know if I could, that was how it worked for me to mm -hmm. just take those small step forwards. But I really love that you brought it back to taking those small steps because oftentimes we see this big picture, this mountain of something we want to build and it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's like, how do I possibly do that? No idea. Right. Um, but just taking it one little tiny step at a time and watching other experts, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Someone's already gone down the trail before you. Mm -hmm. So find somebody who's gone down the trail, ask for help, watch what they're doing and learn from it. And then make some of those things that you learn part of your journey. Mm -hmm. Maybe you take a little offshoot on the trail because this feels right to you, but you're still wearing the boots they recommended. <laughs> you know what I mean? And your feet aren't full of blisters. Like it's really, it's just a matter of, of trusting your intuition too. I didn't think we'd go down the intuition thing, but yeah. intuition has been such a big part of this and it's yeah. mad. It's becoming more important than I ever thought possible. And you know what? I would really love to dive a little bit more into that because I'm actually like embracing some of that right now. It just the whole, the intuition part and how it's aligned, just trying to like figure it out for myself and I know when it's there and I know when like, it's, I kind of feel like it's alignment that uh, intuition is kind of aligned with, you know, your whole body. And then when your head is just off doing its own thing, it doesn't quite work out. At least for me, it doesn't quite work out unless I'm totally, you know, into both the head and the heart. So tell us, a, tell me a little bit, tell the listeners a little bit more about what is it about intuition for you? It's actually, it's something I feel very um, inexperienced in, but very sure it's something I need to explore, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think I've spent a lot of my life fighting it and not knowing I was fighting it, but something always held me back. Like, like I knew this decision wasn't quite right. As you say, aligned with head and heart, mm -hmm. uh, there was something that didn't feel right. Like my body didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And I would keep doing the thing because I'm going to do the thing. <laughs> right up here, right up here. I got yeah. to do it. I got to do I'm it. I'm just going to keep thing. going and work harder and it'll be fine. And it never was fine. And then mm -hmm. it, when I would let that thing go, I can think of a consulting project as a perfect example. I had a, I had a client that I was doing some work for and the work we were doing, I was one of those people that someone asked for help. I would say, yes, I would do the thing. And it just kept, yes, 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 yes to everything. Mm -hmm. Eventually that stacks up on you and you get really busy and it's hard. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I just, I was drowning under all these yeses that were not aligned even mm -hmm. in the same buckets. And so one in particular was, was really, really stressful. Every single meeting was just like, I dreaded it. I overthought it. I was never enough in my head. And that was my intuition screaming at me saying, mm -hmm. this is not what you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I should have I no shoulds. That was a very great learning experience through that. But I think as soon as I let go of what my whole body was telling me to let go of the possibilities just opened and everything became more expansive. And I, I knew my direction, that trail, it's like, I got back on the trail and I was headed up the mountain again Yeah, and it felt, it felt so aligned, but I, I'd love to know from you, do you have an actual feeling when you know your intuition is talking to you? Well, you know, I find it really hard to put into words because feelings are something that we oftentimes have a hard time verbalizing, but there is sensations where it just feels like, I think for you, you too, like it comes from a certain part of your body. So when you're pushing, 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 like you were saying, I just envision like it all coming from my head. Like mm -hmm. I am just a total like brain into it. And my body is like somewhere else. Like, <laughs> but like the intuition to me is just like, there is this, this sense, a feeling, a sense, a 
a sixth sense, maybe, I don't know, but there's something that's not right. And I think we've all experienced those things. Like you're, you're about ready to walk out of the house and it's just like, oh, I know I'm forgetting something. <laughs> I know I'm forgetting something. And you just have this sense, but your brain can't figure it out. But you just have this overwhelming sense that I know I'm forgetting something. And you kind of do something like, okay, we'll try to remember. And, and you're just like, oh, well, I'm just going to go. I got to go because it's, I'm going to run late. So you like, for me, I'd like leave. And then like halfway to where I'm going, I'm just like, oh yeah, I forgot this. And that was what I needed for something later in the day. Yeah. But it didn't take the time to just pause and try to get inside the body and just know. So I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it is that just, it's a sense that comes from like the center of me. Mm -hmm. That makes any sense. I don't know how other people do it, but it's just that. And sometimes it just doesn't go away. Because sometimes we have this like wonderful thought or this feeling and it just kind of comes in and comes out and and you never get it again. But the intuition piece, that's something that's there for you. I call it like a message. Like it's a message for us. And sometimes we ignore it. Like you say, we just like push it away, you know, and they're kind of like little whispers, like it will kind of like whisper to you and saying, hey, this is what you need to do. Or, hey, you know, you're forgetting something. And you just kind of brush it off and then it'll like kind of speak louder. Like it'll kind of start yelling at you going, yes, yes. Like this, this, like you don't get it yet. Right. <laughs> and then other times it's just like, you keep ignoring it. And then a wham, it's going to, you know, smack you across the head, like a two by four. And I don't know if there's any connection to you, but I connect sometimes in my history of working with people in counseling is that that two by four comes as a health a, a health crisis or a health scare um, that we ignore the messages in our bodies. We ignore the feelings that we're having. And then all of a sudden we can't ignore it anymore. But I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question, but I think it's really kind of interesting for the listeners too to kind of pick apart for themselves. What, how do they feel intuition works in their lives? Mm-hmm. And I, I like that you brought up the two by four because <laughs> like you said, it can be super subtle. There's some, and almost being willing to slow down to actually mm-hmm. hear mm-hmm. it. Yes, like yeah. you're such a high achiever, which I'm sure a lot of your audiences mm-hmm. are, but being go, 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 go makes it hard to even hear that intuition. Yep. It could already be chirping louder, but you're just still going. You're still plowing forward through yeah. the slog that you don't even give yourself a moment to pause. And that was so me. I was such a doer such a to-do list, maximize time, productivity champion, more, oh, just I'm, more. <laughs> I'm right with you. I'm right with you. Yeah. And everyone was exhausted around me, but it's like, as soon as I forced myself, even that was a force to slow yeah. down and get outside and get away from social media and really hear my own thoughts. Like, whoa, <laughs> my business actually exploded and I'm doing way less work. Yeah. Yeah what happens when we slow down, things become more clear. You just say, you know, you're like slowing down, but my business exploded. So it's like slowing down to speed up. Do you have any thoughts around that? Like, can you dig into that a little bit more? Yeah. I I think business is such a journey and, or even whatever your goal is, if you're trying to tackle a health goal or you're working on something with your family, Again, that work harder hustle mentality is is preached quite a bit Mm -hmm. and people are exhausted. We hear it from our friends and family and colleagues, but at least for me, I can only speak to my experience. I was that (laughs) and a big health, the two by four hit our family Mm -hmm. and knocked me back. I, I had no choice, but to change what we were focusing on, what was important for us. Mm -hmm. Um, and in that process, obviously I wasn't working as much <laughs> because I, I had other things I needed to take care of. Right. Th- they naturally forced me to not do be as a, mm-hmm. an achiever, more of more, more of just being in the space mm-hmm. with my loved ones at the time um, and going through the experience mm-hmm. and in the slowing down the clarity of what was important, really, really connected mm-hmm. with me internally 
And so when I felt like we could move forward from that health experience and start doing the work that we felt called to do, it just, people keep coming. <laughs> We're not even marketing right now. And I'm just like, as soon as we turn that machine on, we gotta be ready <laughs> because it, it's amazing yeah. when you get aligned, um, your people come, they just come to you. And, and also the feeling and the inspiration comes too, and the excitement and the joy. It, it all just comes. <laughs> and I, I'm still kind of, you can hear I'm not clear in explaining yeah. this because it's, it's new to me right. to have this experience of slowing down to speed up. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. The goals that I was looking to achieve are coming versus me forcing them, if that yeah. makes sense. I think, you know, what you said is that, that alignment attracts people. You know, when we are fully aligned with ourselves, our trueness like comes out, our, our shining light comes out and it just naturally attracts people because we're genuine. We're being authentic to ourselves and we're, we don't come across as like pushy. And I mean, this is my interpretation, but I mean, I get it from you as well is just that when we slow down, I kind of have this phrase of, you know, you have the quieting of your mind, your heart speaks. Mm. So we have to allow our mind to get quiet. And, and sometimes that means we get hit by a two by four in order to do that, because we are, I mean, at least striving for something a lot of us are. And I think a lot of the listeners are that we want something more and we, and we're just so focused on that, that we don't listen to the messages inside. So if we quiet our mind, then our trueness comes out, our mm -hmm. authenticity, our, you know, uniqueness, our, you know, alignment to our heart and to our soul, our intuition comes out. So we can, once we get in tune to that, we're just beams of light and people just are attracted to that. And so I'm so excited for your business. I mean, it's just like, I think when, when we can see somebody that is aligned like that, we're drawn in and we can see them grow and we can see the effect that it has on other people, the ripple effect that is so good so good. I would love to know, how do you quiet your mind? Do you have like an actual <laughs> way that works for you? Cause I love that you said that it's the same for me. The quieting the mind brought out the heart. Yeah. And I think it is a struggle. I don't have, I, I say I want it. And then, you know, it's a practice and I'm mm -hmm. not very good at it. Um, I mean, some people use, you know, meditation, yoga, you know, for me, a lot of times, getting out in nature and going for a walk, I can, I can do that. But I also know the rhythm of myself is if I allow myself in the mornings to do that, I, but before the rush of the day, just, you know, <laughs> bus, you know yeah. I, that just, that's really helpful. I said, so there's not a whole lot, like I don't have a specific practice, but I know some things that work and I do take the time. I can take some time like aromatherapy. There's some oils that have some really nice calming, um, sense to my body. And I, and I don't even have to be, you know, intentional about it. If I just pick it up, it just like, boom, it just makes me like calm down. And so little tricks that I've tried, tried meditation, but my brain goes over here. <laughs> so I need like aromatherapy to help it kind of help, you know, hone me in certain times of the day are better than others, usually right away in the morning or right before bed, um, getting out in nature, going for walks. Um, so what kind of oils do you, what, what's your scent of choice? I'd love to know. I totally do the same thing. <laughs> I'm oh, like, yeah. really? You do that too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's like a grounding thing? I use like doTERRA oils and I think they were like the yoga oils at one mm. point, they were called that the trio. So one is like anchor, Mm -hmm. So it's just like the grounding one. And then I love a line. And so it tries to open up and tries to, at least for me, kind of helps open my mind and heart and make a one. Um, and then it just kind of like, I have to get out of that state. So the other one is like arise, like, all right, get up <laughs> and start going. Like, <laughs> So that's the ones that I kind of use. And, and, and nobody's like, like, they're not perfect at this by any means. It's just like, oh yeah, I need to do that. But then I also get a massage and she uses oils on me. And so half the time I'll look, okay, what, what are my oils? She has this um, device that can, you know, name the top 10 oils that I need. Okay. And, and so it's kind of interesting just like, oh yeah, I know where that one came from. Yep. I need, you know, like <laughs> rest or I feel like I've got a cold coming on. I mean, it's so, 
it's like AI on steroids, you know, how do you like, it's so intuitive of your body, like what your body needs. And so it's really kind of interesting. So, but you, you kind of do the same, you know, you, do you have some practices that are a little bit different or how would listeners try to quiet their mind? Do you think? I'm very much a how, like you hear people talk about this exact subject and I'm like, all right, well, tell me how to do it. Give me the one, two, three, <laughs> you know, which right. almost detracts from the experience. I'm learning this over time. Um, so, but because of that, I've experimented on my own version of how mm -hmm. in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. And what's really helped me is meditation doing, getting up before everyone else is the first thing I try to wake up earlier than everyone else. I sit outside right there on, on that patio it for those like listening. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's not always, I mean, we're in Washington, it can be windy, rainy, right. but I am kind of tucked right under a little bit of a ledge so I can hide from the rain being outside in the morning. Um, to your point of nature, I, I don't know what it is. I could have had terrible dreams, stress, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. If I sit out there for 10 minutes, I'm just back, like everything calms down and my mind empties. And then a meditation practice. I've really, really enjoyed the waking up app by Sam Harris. Mm -hmm. if, if those of you are looking for an app, mm -hmm. he, he takes you through a course when you first get into the app and it's a daily meditation for about 10 minutes, really exploring consciousness in the mind. And that has been, I've, I've done meditation for a long time, for a couple of years, but this has actually changed um, my feeling of being of, of recognizing those thoughts in my day to day a little bit more effectively and being able to be like, okay, I'm just, it's a thought, <laughs> let it go, take a deep breath, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that for a tool tactic person, I would highly recommend the waking up app. That, mm -hmm. that one's been fantastic mm -hmm. for me. Um, reading every day. I keep saying I want to be a journaler, but I haven't really locked that in consistently. So I would say for me, just getting outside, going yeah. for a walk, like you, you said as well. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. I laughed on the journal thing. That's my oh this yeah. The key. <laughs> Get yes. rid of the cell phone. <laughs> Get away from that. Yeah. 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 Journaling is another thing that's been on my list. I love to read. There's so many. I love to read personal development books, but journaling has always been something on on my list. And I and I I don't know. I have a hard time just consistently doing it. But I, I'm finding little ways. You know, if I have journal prompts, I can you know do that. Um, but sometimes I have a journal that I, well, not journal, it's a planner that has like one side planner, one side journal kind of thing on it. And so I've been trying that some days it's just my to do done list. Mm -hmm. And other times I can go, okay, really, what was I thinking there, you know, or diving into a feeling or something. So I want to circle back to you have a lot to do. And you had said something about community that is always just re community is just really been kind of the heart center for things that you've done. Can you first, like, you know, what is community to you and why is it so important and why do you feel others need it? Again, this circles back to probably a selfish reason of I, I create what I wish I had. Mm -hmm. And this was born in COVID for me. I started building online community using a Facebook group because I just knew how it was something I'd done before. Mm -hmm. I was comfortable with the platform mm -hmm. and I knew people were hanging out in different groups and mm -hmm. a group puts together like-minded people in categories, right? Mm -hmm. So I created a category group of my own. <laughs> and then I thought, this is weird. I don't like just commenting on stuff. So let's meet on zoom and you know, the world shut down. So everyone was kind of into that idea. Like I'd like to see real humans on zoom. So we started doing a weekly zoom meeting. And when you ask the question, what is community to me? The only word that popped in my head was connection, mm -hmm. just connection. And also a sense of safety where you can express who you are. You can be who you are. Mm -hmm. And there's no threat <laughs> mm -hmm. to be yourself in a community. It's, it's a place to grow together. Mm -hmm. So really online community is kind of the foundation of everything in business. For me, mm -hmm. we have a very strong fishing community where intangibly in person, we're out on the boats, we're fishing, we're on the radio saying, Hey, how's it going over there? Or, you know, so we're always in connection mm -hmm. who caught the biggest fish. Where'd you get them? What did you get them on? Oh, that's, you know, we celebrate each other. It's mm -hmm. the same in the fishing industry. It's the same in the business world mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship and coaching and consulting. Like we want to see other people win. Mm -hmm. We want to share and support and connect and help the, the entire collective elevate faster. Mm -hmm. And so to me, community, it just fosters that connection and, and, sharing of different perspective and perspectives and ideas to help people get to their goals. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's so important. And I think that, you know, we're social beings. And so we're naturally inclined to, you know, want to be around other people, but to be around other people in general, like we have to be selective, you know, and what you're talking about is community of like-minded people who are there to support you and like cheer you on. And that is a totally different type of community than sometimes people think of a general, hey, I live in this neighborhood type community. Yes. Right. Like I, you know, our community could be our family because we're, you know, there, but we don't necessarily choose those. I, I remember hearing somebody say something about like classmates of kids going, you know, growing up in in school together. Like that could be a community. It could be your classmates, but you were just put in there because of everybody that was in a general location. But the communities you're talking about are those that are you self-select, like you select the communities that you join because of the interests, the similar interests and people that are there to support you and cheer you on, which is more positive experience than I think sometimes people think of in community. I agree a hundred percent. And also being willing to be the cultivator of the community, the one to, like you're doing with this podcast, you're creating a community of people in here and that comes to the messaging, right? Mm -hmm. The kind of message you're putting out, the kind of guests you're putting on this stage are gonna, some people are gonna be like, this is so for me. And then some people are gonna be like, nope, not my jam. Yep. And that's a good thing. Yeah. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> like we want our people to be in our crew. And then those that we're not for, that's okay. They'll find their community where they need to elsewhere. And I think it's being willing to speak your truth mm -hmm. to cultivate that, that collective, if it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And I think what you brought up too is, we want yeah. to uh, touch everybody, right? But we know from experience, not everybody gets us. You know, not everybody agrees with us. So why would we, you know, start something and think everybody's going to love it? You know, we, we don't, we just need to find those that are like us or that we can, um, that, that we can support or that can support us and just go with that because that brings out our strengths. So I know we could talk a long time. We could go off in many different directions as we probably already have today, with, which is great about conversations. But where can listeners find out like more about you? Sure. So I have two communities on Facebook and Facebook groups, and you can just search them. One is called Community First, and the other one is called Anglers Unlimited. So either one of those, if you want to check out the fishing crew, you want to check out the 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 um community first crew, which is mostly coaches and course creators. That's the best place to go. Um, also my website at anglersunlimited.co. We have a Substack newsletter where we talk about nerdy nature things. Also, <laughs> it's not all fishing. It's the coolest bird that we saw this month. Nature can teach us so much. <laughs> oh yeah. Get out. And there's so much to explore in that. And so many new things. It's just to, the pattern, the, of, of how the seasons go in nature, um, can teach us a lot resiliency as well. So as we wrap up, is there one thought or quote that you would like to leave the listeners with today? Yes. Be the leader you need to see. Be the person you need to see. Mm -hmm. This actually, a friend of mine said this to me in a moment. I think I was struggling with, with a presentation and, and I was holding back my real voice and not wanting to share some more vulnerable things in my life. Mm -hmm. And she just said, Jamie, be the leader you need to see. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> wham. Like what message would old me or now me need to hear? Mm -hmm. Am I brave enough to say it? Because it would have helped me, which means it'll help somebody else. So I would say if you have a calling to serve and a calling to help other people, who do you need to see and how can you step into that leadership right now? That's awesome. I, I think of a mirror, like sometimes we just, if we're too afraid to say it to somebody else, let's say it to the person in the mirror Yeah, and, and exactly. be the person that you need to see in the mirror and, and mimic that. Okay. What a great conversation today, Jamie. Thank you so much for joining me. I am going to review this and just like, oh my gosh, there's so many gems that came out of here. And I'm so glad that you were able to bring those out for the listeners today. Well, thank you. It's been an absolute honor to be on the podcast. And I love, love, love what you were creating. You are, you are the leader we need to see. So thank you, Peggy. Oh, thank you, Jamie.